Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And this week, we're talking about must-kill commanders. Uh, what are the most threatening commanders at the table? And uh, how do you cope with them? What do you do if you're running up against these cards? Uh, I'm your host, Richard, and join with me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? I am doing good. Krim, the Asian Avenger. What's up? Yo, what's up? And Tomer, Budget Commander, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm a little bit worried that half my favorite commanders are all here, but uh, we'll, we'll, get to that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> now, now you know why they got to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, before we get into it, uh, today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. So Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value $1 or more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. And you can use their sorted service, where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed, and you get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. So uh, if any cards on this list uh, cause you to sell your deck, <laughs> use card conduit. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. It helps us out. We're on we're on all the all the usual Spotify, YouTube, etc. Uh, that that really gives us uh, some extra boost. So let's get into today's list. But before before we get into the cards, right? We got to preface it with there are common answers to all problems, right? And just listing, I'll, I'll list some off and let's see if you guys have some to add. But player removal, right? You just kill the player. So they, they play some scary thing and you're like, whatever, we just kill them, right? That's one way to remove it because when the player dies, their permanents are removed and their commander goes. Uh, another way is spot removal, right? Or any kind of removal, really. Uh, and we have some options, there, right? You have like the, the swords, the plowshares type options. You also have the imprisoned in the moon options right where you kind of permanently deal with it you have the dranith magistrate option uh those are the common ones are there any ones i'm missing guys before we get into specific commander counters mm, i mean i guess it's kind of targeted removal but counter spells obviously oh, kind of works the same yeah. way yeah counter spell deals with the majority of the ones that we're going to be discussing with. but i think yeah the major one is like if there's one person bringing a must kill commander if the rest of the table identifies it, then nine times out of ten, that can just be resolved by the three players teaming up and taking that person out before they can get snowballing out of control. That usually works. But like it's a little bit trickier if you can't get everybody on board. Or if everybody's playing must kill commanders, how do you deal with certain specific ones that hamper you more than others, you know? I would also say as we go through the list, just like Assume swords to plowshares or counter spell answers them because we're probably not going to say every one of these commanders. Oh, you can just like kill it with a swords to plowshares. Just assume that that works, I think, uh, for all of them. And we'll try to have more unique or creative answers to some of these. Yeah. And, and Tomer brings up the best point in that if it's a full table of must kill commanders, what do you do? You have one swords to plowshares. Do you, what do you use swords? And the answer is probably you do something to cope. Like maybe if they're a go wide commander, you throw down a propaganda and like you can leave it alone and you know save your swords for the the pop off combo commander over there. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll get into it with more specifics. Uh, I'll, I'll kick right off for your turn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll get to uh, everyone's favorite. Uh, I brought Prosper. Now, Prosper. Oh, we're bound. Prosper. <laughs> I, lo- I do Prosper love Tomer Bound, okay? <laughs> As a four yeah, yeah. and a Rakdos 1-4. Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Whenever you play a card from exile, create a treasure token. Uh, the meme is everything works with Prosper. This is Wizard's design mistake because it is both a mana engine and a card advantage engine. And it's sitting in your command zone, right? So the minute this plops down, they can start chaining off spells and like go wild and you're probably going to lose the game. Uh, the meme is everything works with Prosper and it's like not actually a meme. It, like, yeah, every single true. set, there's a new, <laughs> there's a new like red keeps getting these exile matters cards, like play cards yeah. from exile. When you recast a thing from exile, you get some extra bonus. And then every single set, we always have to do the same song and dance like, oh, this is so good and Prosper. But like, it's like, because every <laughs> single set has like either treasure support in red or exile support in red. And it's just, that's how 
red is now. So prosper. Did you say bats how? Because Merc would bats now works with this. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's a good tie in. That's a, and I that'll go that goes great in Prosper. Did you know? Did you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work I thought right. that right. wasn't that banned. Krim I thought it was banned. Popping Sorry. off with Prosper. What do we? What do we do? What do we do when <laughs> pro- <laughs> when Prosper is popping off? <laughs> so I don't think it's really practical to stop a Prosper deck from exiling cards in playing them. Like if you're playing Prosper, your deck's gonna have a bunch of those effects. So the idea that you're gonna like blow up the exile card draw and keep that off the table, outside of like farewells and sweepers, I don't think is really realistic. I think the best plan is to hate on the treasures, which also has the upside of a lot of treasures are in Commander right now, Dockside Extortionist and whatnot. So I would lean towards stopping the mana snowball. I don't think you can stop the card snowball, but cards like Karn the Great Creator, uh, Yasharn, that just keep your opponent from using the treasures for mana. Or if you don't want to be that mean, you can like... Uh, go further down the list and play like Viridian Revel we've talked about that draws you cards when treasures get sacked. I would be I would be going that direction. I would focus on the treasures to try to slow down Prosper. You do want to be mean to the the Prosper <laughs> player, though. That's the thing. I, I that's where like I know that we already talked about Jonathan Magistrate, but extra so here because this is not just like just like you had mentioned, even Prosper's not on board. A card like Jonathan Magistrate is so good against it because it's also got a bunch of other exile impulse draws, things like that, that you really need to shut down. And shutting down the treasures is really good. Uh, and like cards like Phyrexian Sensor are things that I would lean towards. I know we're looking towards Staxy pieces, but these are just what you, these are like where you have to go to stop Prosper. Either that or like Seth had mentioned, shutting down the treasures. So, so Prosper is interesting in that spot removal is not as effective against him because, I mean, obviously it removes him, right? But he's a four drop. So like he's recastable. You can bring him back after it gets removed, but he also generates treasures, right? So they, they have like, it's like the Golos problem, right? Like you, he comes down, he makes some treasures, you remove them, but they already have the mana to cast him again. You can keep going. Uh, so spot removal, not as good. I would lean stacks, but no one plays stacks. Right, like the the cards that cause you to you know cast only one card a turn. Uh, the drawing one card a turn does not work. Okay, so don't do that. But uh, the casting one card a turn. But people don't play these cards, so I think Seth is they, it's they the don't? treasure hate, right? Because treasure hate is reasonable to play. You can play treasure hate. Uh, you can play things like uh, what, what's what's the beetle that makes all artifacts ETB tapped. Uh, the beetle, like Manglehorn, Manglehorn, or something. Yeah. Oh, it's like, Manglehorn, right. like, kills yeah, it's like a beast, but also, I think. Yeah, oh, it's a beast. <laughs> yeah, it's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> but like that slows Prosper down significantly. They yeah. can't like just chain off, right? Because their their treasures come into play tapped. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think treasure hate is where we go. So I I'm against you all here. I think because like so my boyfriend plays Prosper. It's one of his favorite decks, and I've noticed that. Out of all of the cards, like he does a lot of cast from exile stuff, but if Prosper is not on the battlefield, like he's really choked on mana. Like he really relies on Prosper to make that mana so you can keep casting spells from exile. And Prosper is on the battlefield, like okay, and he gets on tap, like he's gonna have a huge turn. Uh, but like if you kill Prosper like twice, like if you kill him once, then he's gonna take an entire turn to recast him. If you kill him twice, it's gonna take like multiple turns for him to come back. And if you like. Yeah, like two kills on Prosper, and I think the deck kind of becomes incredibly fair. Like, it really reliant on Prosper to make mana. Like, you could run, like, Sardian and Avenger. I think, like, the Krim really put me on that card. Because, like, whenever he sacrifices uh, a treasure, he gets pinged. And Sardian and Avenger, if he has treasure slaying around, he's just going to get hit for, like, a bajillion damage. I think those are really good. But, like, I don't, I wouldn't go deep enough to, like, treasure hate. I feel like if you just kill Prosper, like, the deck kind of falls apart. Person. But I feel like uh, so one of the things I think that's important to think about as we're going through this entire list is the cards also have to be wide enough that you can actually put them in your deck, because most of the time, even with a popular commander like Prosper, you're not going to be playing versus Prosper. So sure, you could play like uh, whatever Snow Rod or Stony's Islands and just get them. But do you really want that in your deck for all the other matchups? So I think that that's something to keep in 
That's something to keep in mind. Uh, so I think yeah. what yes. the best answer is, is going to depend on your deck. Like something like a Mayhem Devil or a, what's the five drop Golgari thing that gets bigger when everyone, uh, ever anyone sacrifices a, a permanent. Like these sacrifice cards, if you're a sack sure. deck, they actually work as hate for Prosper too, as it's doing its thing. But those are cards I wouldn't just run a Mayhem Devil in a random deck if I don't have synergies for it. So I think that's something yeah. else that's worth keeping in mind as we go through uh, through this list. Yeah, like I think a Phyrexian Sensor is probably going to hurt my deck nine times out of ten because I like casting more than one yeah. spell each turn. If well, I was, yeah, if I was corn? a Phyrexian deck or something, then yeah, I'm, on, I'm on board because it works really well. But I don't know if I just run that in a generic white deck because it might hurt me. Karn, I think, is a good one. Karn, and that's one that's like pretty flexible, I guess, uh, especially if you have some artifacts. So yeah, yeah I like, I, like being able to being able to pull. <laughs> Are we allowed to play like, stacks pieces? <laughs> I mean, yes. If it works like, in it, your it's, deck, like, I think it's fine. I, I play Karn in a good Prosper. amount of decks just because I know that I can always bring something back from Exile because I assume my artifacts... Because, as I've said before and I've stated, like, a good amount of my decks do just casually have a chunk of artifacts, right? So, and oftentimes with Exile effects being more prominent and all of that, like, yeah, like, I can find a way to pull them back. On top of that, I do just like having a natural way... To stop all the treasures and nonsense that goes on in all my de- uh, all my decks, so my that mind. comes down I'm, to the I'm, deck I'm builder. Tomer. Here's what's gonna happen. Okay, here Tomer plays Prosper, and then Seth is like, "Oh, I got you, Collector Oof," mm-hmm. and then everyone else at the table is like, "Yo, my mana rocks, my Jewel rocks Lotus work. and stuff," and then they all just murder Seth. Kill Seth while Tomer yeah. is just building up mana, <laughs> and then Seth dies. Tomer <laughs> pops off and wins the game. Uh, so, so. Maybe the artifact hate is too much because you're just going to draw the ire of the whole table. Like, if you play a Karn, people will just start hitting you because, like, their one mana rock is disabled, even yeah. though you're stopping like, the entirety How of the How are they hitting you? Deck. They don't have their mana. The <laughs> rock. <laughs> they, I, they have to play I actually don't want to be the arch enemy. I think Sardine Avenger, I, I put it in a Curia, and it's just like, it doesn't hate treasures in particular. It's effective against it, but, like, it's just always going to be like a 5 1 trampler, and then I put a nice equipment on it, and it's like, and it has first strike too. So it's like a 5 1 first strike trampler, and just hits people, and sometimes it gets treasure people a little bit harder or artifacts, but I like that one. It's flexible enough. But. I'm a fan. I, I, I love Sardian Avenger. Really? I think that card is super sweet. It's aggressive, it's player removal, and it, like, Sure, they still get to do what they do. Problem is, they yeah. still get to do what they do, though. Sometimes. But like, I think Pros- if Prosper dies like two times, like the deck is very much on life support. I mean, I think I think that's true, but I think that's true of like literally every commander we're talking about. Today. Not mine. Like, if you kill it two or three times, it's gonna <laughs> not mine. With maybe one exception. With can maybe I, one can exception. Can I segue? Can I segue into uh, mine? Tomer, what, what's your right. what's your must kill commander? There's one commander that uh, try as you may. You can kill her as many times as you like, and maybe she's just going to keep coming back for just two mana. And it's Eureka, the Tiger Shadow. So this is a three mana Demir Human Ninja um, that says, Whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand so it's card advantage. And then each opponent loses life equal to the card's uh, converted mana cost for mana value. So usually a Eureka deck is full of like evasive one drops that can't be blocked. Um, and you ninjutsu in, oh, sorry, the one main thing is, yeah, she costs three mana, but nobody's actually in cast her, because she has something called commander ninjutsu. For two mana, uh, you could just ninjutsu any creature you have from the command zone, uh, with Yuriko come from the command zone, and bada bing, bada boom, you're circumventing the commander attacks at all times. So, as long as you're doing the commander ninjutsu, you're always gonna be paying two mana. It's never, it doesn't matter how many times Yuriko dies. Um, she... She is scary, you know, like it's a bunch of evasive beaters. You have a ninjutsu, you usually flip like a 13 mana spell, like delve spells and what, like dig through time and whatnot. Um, you die really, really fast. And the problem is that, like, you can kill Eureka as many times as you want. They just put another one mana evasive beater and attack you with it. And for two mana, she's back. So, like, how do you? I, I don't think the let's just kill her is like, you can't just sort of plowshares her three times and then hope she's gone for the rest of the game. She's just, she's just, she'll, she'll still be there. What do you do? She's dumb because she doesn't need what to do? attack you. She can hit your opponent yeah. and, you and then dome everyone. So you could yeah. be like fully like pillow forwarded up and still take damage from her. And you're drawing cards too. You're drawing cards and like destroying the table at the same time. Oftentimes they're, they're also scrying things to the top, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and so I'm not even joking, like cards like Thought Scour after the scry <laughs> and target them. The aggressive yeah. Thought Scour. So you're playing Thought Scour in your deck. <laughs> I, I do, though. I, like some of Play my decks Jace. I do. Oh, oh, sort of biting mine at instant speed. I mean, well, that's not off. instant speed. Yeah, uh, that's I, instant I would speed. love. Sorry, I, I was thinking about a good card. Uh, whoops. Um. Like, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Second <laughs> off, I think that what you could do is something like Pestilence because Tomer is right. I think killing, like, you know, Eureka is kind of pointless. Uh, it's probably better to kill everything around Eureka, right? So having something like a Curse of Death's Hold, a Pestilence, uh, and then just being able to constantly activate ping down, or, like, the creatures that are, are attacking will definitely make it so that there's no point in playing Eureka. Like, they, they, if, they, if they don't have anything to attack with, it's very hard for Eureka to pop off. Yeah, then then it becomes fair. The other thing worth mentioning about like Curse of Death's Hold and those style of answers, like everything gets negative one, negative one, is it also stops Eureka's ability because it has to hit for combat damage. So if you give Eureka negative one, negative one, it's not actually snowballing itself. So I think that's kind of a sneaky way. That was actually the first thing I thought of is I know in 60 card formats, the best way to beat ninjas is to kill those horrible evasive one drops that they keep playing so they can't ninjutsu the big ninjas into play. So you're spending a lot of removal on creatures that normally you would be like, I really don't want to spend my removal on this changeling outcast or this fairy seer or something. But if your opponent's a ninja deck, then all of a sudden killing those things becomes very, very important to stop the snowball. I think it's also notable, and I don't know how if these cards are wide enough, but Pithy Needle style effects for Axine Revoker can actually name Yuriko to shut down the Commander Ninjutsu ability. So that's kind of like a sneaky way to make your opponent play fairly. They actually have to cast it and it's not going to be ninjutsu and it's going to have a command tax. So that's, if, if it works in your deck, I think, like, you can find it with Urza Saga. Like, if you're playing an Urza Saga, is playing a Pithy Needle that bad in a Commander deck? Like, just as a, one of your tutor targets? I think that might actually be in the conversation, right? If you're an artifact deck, I guess it's cool, right? Like, yeah, like yeah, I, I, I like synergy. it in an artifact deck. All right, I, 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 I don't give know. you some I, weak I, answers. Lifelink. <laughs> Play uh, your whip of it. Sure. <laughs> no, like you just you need okay, to okay, like well, no. not not like like if I'm at eighty life, you can Yuriku me all you want. Like this is not effective, right? Well, so if, if I just take like Gary's and you know just gain a lot of life. Uh, incidental life gain. Uh, what, oh, what's that? What's that thing? Like, there's the creature. Whenever you're like a land goes into the battlefield, you gain life. Or whenever a creature you control dies, gain life. Like, there's a lot of like random black stuff that gains life that we actually play. Uh, that you know, do that. You get the fairies pro your way out of this. They flip a, a 16 <laughs> drop. Your opponents die. You get the fairies pro untap and then try to kill Yuriko. Uh, so you you can if you gain enough life, it's not as scary. Uh, I mean, what about so, remember? But, it's also drawing cards, though, too. Yeah. So even if you like stay ahead on but, life, but if they're your opponent's still going to drown you in card advantage. Yeah, I guess that's true. They take extra turns well, sometimes because out. some of those big spells are like temporal trespass, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, things like that. So, so you I, may be able to gain life for maybe one attack, but what about multiples, right? So I, I have at least one card uh, that I put in basically all my green decks. Um, as like a very versatile removal, but it's very, very effective against commanders and particularly effective against uh, Eureka. And that's Kenra's Transformation. Uh, it's a two yeah. mana uh, aura that turns, it basically Oko's uh, the or, the enchanted creature. It turns into a 3-3 three, three, uh, creature with no abilities. And you draw a card. So it even replaces itself. And so now Eureka, if you, if you enchant Eureka with it, it becomes a 3-3 three, three creature with no abilities. And it doesn't go back to the command zone. So you can't ninjutsu it about. The Eureka player now has to find a way to kill their own commander in order to recast her. And like, sure, the deck will have ways of actually doing that. But finding that or convincing somebody to like ch to, to block her or something so she can go back to the command zone is going to take a lot of time, hopefully. Um, and that might be you enough time to actually kill the Eureka player before they kill you. Um, I call that kind of like tether removal. There's like a bunch. There's like Dark Steel Mutation. There's Song of the Dryads. Richard said Imprison in the Moon. Um, out of Time is like a board wipe that phases everything out for like indefinitely, basically. Um, so that. there's like, there's, I call it like tether removal because it keeps the commander on the battlefield, but n like effectively neuters them. They can't really do anything. Um, so that might be a, a way to deal with Eureka. 
Uh, I like Counter Transformation. Out of all of them, I think Counter Tr- Transformation just should go into every like most green decks because I think that card is very good. The concern I have for that though is those decks, depending how they're built, if they actually also play other ninjutsu. Yeah, they can they can ninjutsu the Yuriko yeah. back to hand, <laughs> <laughs> discarding <Yeah>. the elk. <laughs> It's you gotta like, like out that, of time them then. Like everything yeah. phases yeah. out. <laughs> GG. You gotta hit them without a time. I mean, that's nothing's like, permanent, like, right? But that. you can stall yeah. them two, three turns while you murder <laughs> the, the Eureka player, right? Yeah. So. They and have trouble dealing with an out of time outside of like Feed the Swarm and Psych Rift. Like those are the best ways they could deal with it. So out of time is like a nice answer, like an oubliette or something like that. And I think this is also a player removal commander because one of the downsides of playing a bunch of changeling outcasts and fairies here is like, and we're having ninjutsu, which really incentivizes attacking is a lot of times the Eureka deck's not going to be great on defense. So if the table kind of like bands together and attacks the Eureka player, they might be able to just get them dead before Eureka can kill everyone else. So. All right. Krim, what's your must kill commander? You have my baby uh, on there, Krim. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, your baby is kind of a monster. Uh, <laughs> <but, laughs> Niv Mizzet Perun. I think this card is absolutely nuts um, because usually it's one of those commanders where if they untap, right? Because first off, l- l- I'll tell you, if you don't know what it does by now, uh, it's a triple blue, triple red, 5-5 five, five that can't be countered flying. And whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet deals one damage to any target. Whenever any player or whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So very easily, this is this combos off with curiosity, right? Like you just lose the game. Uh, there's so many ways, like Ophidian's Eye. There's so many ways to just if they untap, they win the game. Uh, and and like it's it's kind of a problem. And if you try to answer it, they could draw into an answer to your answer. So realistically, the turn it comes down, you almost want to. I. There's very few ways that someone can politic to let me let them keep a Niv Mizzet. Once they're tapped out, I'm going to just snap kill it. If I can kill, like, because that's ignoring the fact that they could also just have free counter spells. If they have free counter spells, then that's even, that's where the table really has to band together. In uh, blue and red? Is, free counter spells? Yeah, no. free counter spells with the draw of cards. Yeah. Okay, like, what, if this, I told, what if I told you this? What if I said, but he's a little cutie. Would you leave that him alone? Never, that's never he's stopped me from blowing up tons of tons of he's things. He's a little cute little guy. Um, All right, fine. I mean, like, I, I just, I don't know. There's very few ways that, like, this can't be countered. So this is one of those situations where, you know, you can't just counter it. And if you just kill it, there's ways to protect it. So I think something to help with dealing with a Niv-Mizzet is legitimately draw denial. Like, you wait, right, until they try to draw, right? And then you let the, like, you make sure the thing that's at the top of the stack is like a notion thief unfortunately orc orcish bowmasters here isn't good because they'll still get their draw and then just ping your bowmaster whereas this one you like notion thief shuts down the draw like just straight up or narset just straight up shuts down the draw so they get their one and that's about it and that's your window to like like this is one of those things where i do really feel like there's a window that you can kill it before it's too late and that window is when they tapped out and they just played it so I don't know any other way other than draw denial and then just like either a a hard sweeper, but even then they could, you know, counter that or phase out. I don't know. This is one of those things where it's in the colors where it's so hard to kill. So I think the table has to do everything they can. Throw the house at it. Stop what you're doing and just throw your like throw everything you have at it. Yeah, card card draw denial is good. The other thing that's really good is Niv really cares about non creature spells. So I think like. Any taxing of non-creature spells, Thalia effects, things like that, deafening silence, you can only cast one non-creature spell each turn, things like that. I don't know if that's too stacksy for the typical table, but those are good ways to slow down a Niv player too. Like maybe not quite as brutal as being like, you can't draw cards, but still, if you get to spend two or three mana on your spells instead of one or two mana, like it makes it much harder to do that big snowball win the game turn. I was going to say, like, like I mean, like, though, you have to worry, though, because it does need to die, right? Because your Thalia gets pinged as soon as they draw on their turn, right? So they still yeah. get that one draw. And so that's why niv is just so nuts. So, like, it has to be, like, an enchantment, right? Like an oubliette, something like that, or an O-ring, or or even, like, a, a brutal Cathar. No, I mean, you just knock them low. It's a six drop, right? If, if you're sitting at ten life and you play your six drop, <laughs> right? Like, anything can kill you. Uh, they they get unlimited cards, but they don't get unlimited mana. That's not prosper, okay? You just get unlimited cards, and you get to ping things. So if you throw the kitchen sink at them, maybe they have two counter spells. Maybe they draw a third one, but three players, 
uh, applying pressure will you know stress that mana base right and they they can't, they got to choose right like i play a very scary threat do you counter it or do you hold the counter spell to protect niv visit right so you got to apply the pressure you need to apply the pressure before niv visit comes down so they're low enough that you know they're actually sweating um but yeah you can't you can't let them like you're you're you're, you're at risk of dying to curiosity combo at any second <laughs> right so you can't yeah, really leave this thing yeah. around yeah um, you, you need to get rid of it and it's it's hard to get rid of you can't even counter it on the way down can't be countered nope uh Maybe you scare, mind the them, take them out their colors. It's triple blue. It's triple <laughs> yeah. red. It, I mean that, that's valid too. So like I'm I'm a filthy Nimbus player. I'm shameless. He's my favorite character in in uh, Magic. Um, and I had I had a casual casual. I made like a a thirty dollar Nimbus Perun deck, and it was too strong for any of my groups. So I moved it to CDH, and now he's fine in CDH. He's actually not. Not the strongest at the table by a mile. Um, and yeah, but he's like, still a very good CDH. He's commander. still very good. But like the way I lose is like nine times out of ten. He's six mana. He costs six colored mana as well. So he takes a really long time to get onto the battlefield. And then if you do kill him, I'm basically out. You know? Like if you if you blow up my mana rocks, I'm delayed way too many turns. Um, if you just kill me before I get an it out. Uh, that's totally valid. And then if you just team up and kill Niv Mizzet, like yes, I'm running every single free counter spell and redirect effect in in the game uh, because I draw so many cards, I can afford it. Um, but you could just if you just you just kill him. It's six mana. He's gonna tap out to cast Niv Mizzet, or else you've probably killed him before then. Um, and then if he is on the battlefield, don't let him on tap. You just you can't you can't let him on tap. So what's that? Like, would you, would you, of the ones mentioned, right? Like, I think so far, like, between Prosper, Niv Miss It, I mean, Eureka, it doesn't matter, right? But, like, <laughs> the point here is, like, I, I think that you absolutely cannot let Niv Miss It untap, <laughs> like, at all. Yeah. Prosper, maybe. Maybe I have a shot, right? Like, you got a shot that's like gl- slow, grind you out, value engine. Yeah. Niv Miss It, no, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna lose. <laughs> like, if, if they untap. Like this, sometimes I don't, I don't, I legitimately don't have it. Like I don't have counters. Like I have like one counter spell, and I don't, I draw three more cards, and I just don't have anything else. But like you can't, you can't allow that to happen because chances are I do have it. You know. All right. Yeah. Seth, hit us with your muscular. Okay. Community. Can you top oh. the dragon? <laughs> I will. I, I will top your dragon with another dragon in Corvald Faker's King. So uh, Corvald. <laughs> Pretty busted. Came from the Brawl decks. It's a five mana Jun commander. It's a four four flyer. This says when it enters the battlefield or attack, sack another permanent. And then whenever you sack a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Corvald and you draw a card. So one of the things that makes Corvald very powerful, especially in a deck that's built around Corvald, is it has an ETB trigger. So even if you kill Corvald right away, you're sacrificing presumably some random token that your deck is built around. You're getting to draw a card. You're getting a counter on. On it you also even in response to a swords to plowshares or instant speed removal spell if you get a bunch of treasures around or clues around you can sack those and draw a bunch of cards turn them all into card advantage and then if corvold actually gets to untap it's a legit threat to one shot people a lot of times because of those counters it very quickly grows into a 10 10 a 15 15 and uh, something can just kill you on the spot so corvold i think is uh, is my number one must kill commander as far as how to deal with corvold there's some similarities i guess to prosper in a weird way in the sense that um it often cares about these artifact tokens on the battlefield keeping the board clear of the treasure tokens and the sacrifice fodder i guess it's a little bit similar to your Rico too actually like if you can keep the support cards off the battlefield and the Corvold player has to like play Corvold and sack a land and get a counter that's the ideal scenario is keeping the board clear of stuff for Corvold to sacrifice but if you don't pay attention to that and Corvold can come down with a board full of treasures and a bunch of useless tokens it gets out of control very quickly that's look you know what was recently reprinted into a starter deck or a pre-con Notion Thief. <laughs> That's, That's the answer to everything. To everything. That, look, everything. Look, I mean, Notion Thief is not very good me, against Niv, but it is very good here. <laughs> yeah, Notion... Well, Notion Thief helps against Niv to shut down that turn to draw, but, like, here... Toughness, baby. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you have to wait to the top of the stack, right? Like, yeah, but, like, <laughs> the, the main thing here is... 
legitimately Corvald is digging and just trying to get a like just a critical mass of just card advantage and it's just going to have so many things to do but if you can just deny every bit of card advantage that they could get like if I can't blow up all the treasures then then I'm going to just try to shut you off of your draw right uh, the the obvious being that yes just kill Corvald but like outside of that like I am shutting down your draw and there's just too many ways that Corvald relies on its draws to like get to where it needs to be to close out the game so if you can shut that off entirely delay them annoy them with that like a narcissist or or anything like that that's big that is like huge one of the problems with the, with the crim theory of stopping things is all the cards you're suggesting make me want to kill you instead of the arch enemy commander yeah <laughs> yeah but you know <laughs> hey you can kill me as much as you need to you're actually but, helping them by deflecting yeah. all the aggro onto yourself <laughs> well you can hold but then, the SP4 when Corvold ca- castle mm, or at least. yeah I yeah mean, that's a smart play I really do. That's super. Like, if your whole plan is, like, Notion Thief, you, the whole yeah. table is angry at you, and the Corval player will just snap a removal piece at it and then <laughs> pop off. So it's very dicey. I mean, <laughs> right? but the thing is, like, they've got to do that plus play Corvald, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, in the the turns, like, where, like, okay, sure, maybe they're at a million mana now, and late game, there's a chance they might have it, but, you know, that's a chance you just got to take, right? Mm-hmm. Because... Other than that, what else can you do outside of just purely removing it? You have to shut off its card advantage and or like play something like Yasharn. I think Yasharn, if you like, I think Yasharn is just generally good, like as a sweet creature in the world of treasures and all of that. If you're in green and white, I would just play Yasharn. I think it's definitely a wide enough thing as long as you have green and white. I was just. I was just gonna I, say it's the second commander where we've said Yasharn. It's a, like a four mana four four. It gets you two lands piece. when it ETBs, <laughs> and it stops like uh, it stops treasures. It's it stops Corvald. Like, doesn't this seem worth it? Like, just should Yasharn be a staple? I'm seeing EDH rec as a four percent. Like, shouldn't I it be we don't play higher it than that? Stacks piece. It's, I mean, is that really good? I mean, is that really the slow piece? Pick is every that too time. mean? On the podcast, yeah. the underrated podcast, I brought it up. It was like a year ago. This card is no. It's not too mean. Okay, I think it shuts right. down fetch lands, but like, okay, it well, shuts down treasures. Yeah, Anybody sure, whatever. Cry? Because like, oh, the poor think, well, poor think of the oh, treasure poor players. Duck well, 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 someone who <laughs> think of the duck duck players. Yeah. 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 Why don't I just like, play? Why don't I just play Winter Orb? That shuts down all these commanders too. Should be like Armageddon. Good point. Actually, without lands, it only shuts. It's 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 such a light stacks piece, and it shuts down just the broken things, right? Like it is a stacks piece, right? It's not the nine like different people have different threats holds for what they consider stacks so you're, you're you're starting to enter that arena yeah sure the sack fine. player is gonna say that <laughs> there'll oh be my some gosh. player there they'll be like oh my god i can't believe you brought hard stacks you're like chill dude it's <laughs> your shard and then you <laughs> well, have to have this conversation right like <laughs> this is why i like your shard so much is even when even chill, if he dude. dies and even if he's not actively shutting anything that at the same time he enters a bat. Well, he gets two lands into the into your hand. Two. So he's That's not just replacing himself. My he's getting like he's making sure you hit your next two land drops. I think that's actually yeah. like really good for four mana. You get a yeah. four four two lands in hand, and then the rest like yeah, I can just completely ruin a Corvold's day. I think there was I forget who, which is fine or like anybody who's running all the fetches and stuff. Uh, they get sad too. I, I forget there was like yeah, that was it? like a good way to be arch enemy. It's good against no, Prosper. But like, I like think somebody dropped down, down a Necropotence treasure. and didn't know what Yasharn did, and they just like was like, oh, oops, and then oops. they just killed the Necropotence player, right? It's like, <laughs> what if what if they just played like wooden foothills that are insanely mad at you because you played Yasharn, and then <laughs> they're like, gonna remove basic. the Yasharn and unlock Corvold? Then I wait, hold on, the fetch the wooden foothills because it's totally worth it. Trust me, bro. It shuts off Force of Will, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. The free casting, <laughs> you're right. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I, I need to know. We're, we're going to put a poll up. Is basics. your shard casual? It we is. Got, it is. I think it is. If you, it's not I even mean, a debate. It's so casual. If it's you get play with your basic, shard, deck. <laughs> can you play any removal? Can you play any interaction? I feel like no, no, you're your, pretty your shard, far down the shard casual. Your is like a, a stacks piece, though. It's not removal, right? <laughs> It, oh, it's just get a light out of like here. like He's you would you would consider Thalia a stacks piece, right? Even though it is because it's every it's very light, right? Like yeah. it's not that impactful. But Yasharn is like sack decks, bye bye. <laughs> like your deck yeah, is done. Well, don't be a sack deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hard stacks for a specific narrow 
Nah. set of, of deaths. It's not right? narrow though, like, because not like there's so many. Uh, that's treasures true. It's not narrow anymore in 2023, right? Yeah. So but does that like, make it, it is, more stacksy? <laughs> I think like, you just, can. You just kill him. You can get a. You can get away with it because it's a 4-4 that gets you two lands. Like, if you yeah. slam a stony silence or a planar void, that's a pretty strong, like, I'm trying to ruin one player's day. Well, uh, but you Sharn, if people get mad, like, yeah, out of the just, deal, so I just gotta fine, get my bro. forest. I just gotta get my <laughs> yeah. forest and my planes. Like, to chill. This I'm is an open-ended, yet. like, good <laughs> answer. Like, I just recommend this. For any deck that can good. run it, like, can get away with it. It doesn't mess your game plan up. I just put it in. He's just so great. He's wonderful. It does have a big problem, though, that it only gets basic lands, which does really reduce <laughs> Once its, again, uh, its That's utility. all upside, baby. <laughs> it's that's already all picking upside. two out of three of my, my basics yeah, in my deck. <laughs> I, I will say of all the commanders so far, I think Corval is the most tame. I'm not actually that afraid of him. Wow. Yeah. If, you, if you have a removal spell and a board wipe, like you're not scared. You're not at risk of getting one shot. And you undo inversion and Corvold's like out like they need engine pieces on the battlefield to do something as opposed to say Niv Mizzet, who just needs like himself, yeah. right? Or Prosper, which like creates mana while you're at it. Like Corvold, you don't die, which you know is not given. Like you know they they may not be able to one shot you, and then you just wrath the board, and maybe they drew like four cards. Like sure, whatever, right? Like they could have cast you know painful truths on their turn, right? Like it's not. You know, it, it is a threat, but it's not like I got to go nuclear and stop this. Right? I got some time to do something as long as I like I, I, I avoid the one shot from Corvold. I, I do agree disagree. with Richard there. So I, 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 I like on version. Like I like our revelation. You just like don't die. And then our revelation and you're good. <laughs> right. I actually disagree because you're in green. Like everybody's mentioning how they have treasures and everything. But Corvold's like main thing is that fetch lands draw cards and like Sakura sure. Tribe Elder draws you a card. So you have all this access to green ramp and he's only five mana too. Um, so in green, which is like that's equivalent to like a three drop, honestly, like you can, like, I know. You can kill Corvo like two times and he can still be recast. Like, I don't know. I don't. I think Prosper is the least least scary. Like you just kill Prosper twice, and then I just I forget about that player for the rest of the I, game. I actually okay. So I'm I more with Tomer there. of 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 the cards mentioned here. Prosper is the least scary, but I don't think that Corvald is scarier than Niv Mizzet. In CD, okay, we, yeah, okay. yeah, we need a running rank here. Okay, scarier. so Yuriko Ooh. top. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Yuriko's yeah, already yeah. goaded. Like like Yuriko she's already Niv. The, and then yeah. Corvold Prosper after those yeah. in some in order. CDH, I think. I oh, think that's, interesting. That sounds correct. Okay, that sounds about right. But like in casual, I think I'd be more afraid of Corvold than them, is it? I feel like Wait, every why? time I've played against because a Corvold, like, and it happens a lot, I lose to it. Like at random command fest, whatever. Like even when you try to build the team deck, like it just gets so big and it just like yeah. runs over so much card advantage, so much recursion. It's it's very tough to actually stop. The problem with well, Niv, at least, is you need you your Lotus and You haven't had me at the tables. You just <laughs> yes, I know. Me I need more tables. Notion Thieves. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, I just play a hard, like, silly amount of numbers of, like, removal. So, <laughs> All right, next up, we have Sithis, Harvest Hand. It's a Selesnya legendary enchantment creature nymph. Uh, two mana, Selesnya, one, two. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. The most tame. Of draw engines, no? Of, of yeah, all the cards yeah. you see here, mm. it just happens that Enchantress is a very strong archetype, and they have lots of one mana spells that can just pop off and, and chain together. But it's pretty tame in this. I, I would put it last in this list of scary things. So far. Are you Are we kidding? Me? Really? Yeah. Two mana. You know how many times I mean, you have to uh, kill this stupid thing? I don't know thing? if you're respecting that card enough, but yeah. <laughs> really? You know how many times you have to kill Sith? Like, if I have a you source of power You don't kill Sith, shares, though. You kill everything. Like, you got, you got to take the whole board with it, right? You can't leave, like, the enchant... Because they can play an enchantress into Sithis and then draw cards, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's, like, too much. You got to take the whole board with you. But that's the problem. It's like if you're in removal, black, right? like you're very limited on like and you're in red, like two colors, two of the five colors. Boom pile, Tomer. Struggle. Boom pile. Oh, Boom pile. pile. Boom that's dead. The, the, the seven Somehow mana sack. Out. Everything. I mean, that's I colored. run O stone. I'm a respectable person. <laughs> oh, oh, o stone. Ugin. Yeah. Yeah. All this dust. Ugin. Ugin. All this dust. Like, Ugin. Yeah. But Staples. like it's it's still there's still more limited options. And the annoying thing is that Sith has cost two mana and she's in green 
it's like they have sanctum they have sanctum weaver the task for bajillion mana and they have the sarah sanctum too like they can make so much mana in selesnya especially in enchantress they're like and it's a two drop it's always going to be coming out on turn two you have to ki- like it can't stay on the battlefield because it's just going to draw you stupid amounts of cards it even gains you life for <laughs> yeah. some obscene reason it's <laughs> like so dumb it's only it's one so life. hard it's so <laughs> sticky that it's adds up there and there's like this you just there's not enough mass enchantment removal for all colors i'm sorry i hate this card however no. farewell would is an but how do we deal it's with not, it? it's not as scary so how as do we you deal guys make it? it out to be like someone drops a toski draws five you're like oh, okay Synthesis <laughs> draws one you know like one per spell you cast like yes it's good but it's like <laughs> it doesn't win right like it, it just draws cards and then into something that wins eventually but yeah, you know you can let your opponent games. draw two mm-hmm. cards Clean it up with a board wipe and like you're like you're okay, right? Like it's not the end of the world. Like you didn't get one shot like Niv visit, I, right? Like uh, I don't <laughs> think you can. I'd just rather board just wipe die to Niv visit though that, than watch the person be that's like. True. And then I play an enchantment and I draw five more cards and I gain one life and then I'm going to ramp a little <laughs> bit and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that and it's like just kill me, kill bow me. masters, <laughs> oh, bow masters, no, bow masters. yeah, All bow right. masters yeah. do work. Yeah, Although, me, like, give also, me more ammo on how to kill stuff. I was asking for enchantments. Oh. Enchantments has everything, though. That's part of the problem, right? You get enchantment removal. There's even flash enchantment removal. You get stacks pieces. So you're drawing these cards as you're playing powerful effects. So I think it's actually. I, I think Richard might be underrating it a little bit. I think it's actually it's also better like, than that. It's, it's also the it's sweepers, archetype right? with like privilege provision and what's the one that's like the two oh, the, drop that the, gives everything mm. shroud. Yeah. It's like uh, it's layers of nonsense, and then they're like, protection. "Oh, you want to attack me? Ghostly prison, sphere of safety, <laughs> and pay and twenty it's, mana to attack me." It's and like, it's all drawing that card and gaining a life as you're playing those effects. Yeah. It's really got to be sweepers, right? Like, is that? Are there any answers but, outside of like being a progress sweepers, farewell? But they need like, to exile. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they have farewell. to be farewell. <laughs> so they have gotta, to it's be actually got to be farewell. It's or the versus. best archetype for mass reanimation because you have brilliant restoration you have open yep. the vault you have replenish and all these things are just like take all the enchantments in your graveyard <laughs> put them back on the battlefield have fun glhf and it's like <laughs> sorry do you see eviction my least farewell of the these bunch? are these are <laughs> all things that you have to have uh the problem is i don't even think like like cyclonic rift like like actually really helps with no, this, they have to spend. <laughs> they just mm. cast it all again and draw more. Cards. Yeah, but the thing here is, like, you, get, you, you got a one shot them afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you have the attack sure. them afterwards. Yeah, like sure. you, if they're hiding behind like prison, like ghostly prison and sphere spacey stuff, you can like cyclonic rift and kill them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I don't know how because they've gained so much life, I guess, but. <laughs> Yeah, that life gain doesn't sound like much, but that makes the player removal plan a lot harder, especially combined with the ghostly prisons and the enchantment pieces that keep you from attacking. So actually a hard commander to just take out the Sethus player. Farewell, the hero we need. Ugin, the hero we need. <laughs> yeah. Big Ugin. Yep. All right. All right. I was also able to beat I was also able to beat a Sethus deck a numerous amount of times with my Aether Sworn Canonist. <laughs> that Chris, was, Chris that has no problem everything. with any of these commanders because he just plays all stacks pieces. The answer to all of these is Notion Thief. <laughs> yes. All right, Notion Tober, hit, hit, us, hit us with a must kill commander. What's a must right. kill commander? All right, here's here's a personal uh, uh, least favorite of mine. Of all of these, you thought I was complaining about Sithis? Wait until I like, start vetching about Brago King <laughs> Eternal. This is <laughs> like a four mana. Deck. Azorius two. F- I actually gifted him the deck, the you largest mistake of my life. Deck, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two four flying spirit. When it deals combat damage to a player, you exile any number of non land permits you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under that their owner's control. So this is a mass blink deck that doesn't even have to hit creatures. It's not restricted to creatures. It's anything. So you just. Attack with Brago, you mass blink everything, all your mall drifters come back, you draw 50 different cards, ETB, your oblivion stone gets ring of, or oblivion ring gets ring of another commander, ETB, exile every other thingy. And then the problem with this Brago deck, you see, is not only is the strategy just like value town dot deck, the, the deck is incredibly slow to actually kill people. Like you're dead on turn like six or so with Brago if they're starting to pop off, but you're only going to actually have 
have the mercy of going to the next game like five hours later when they finish killing you with their 2-2 flyers. Then the other problem is that they have so much blinking at instant speed. So you're like, okay, I'll sort of flash as the bragger. And they're like, nope, we're going to Flicker Wisp. And we're going to Eerie Interlude and a mass on thing over the thing. Restoration Angel. It's like, it's so hard to like target removal. This annoying, long, drawn out commander it's so good and also that's like the tame way like you really want to go like winter orb effects and stuff like that stasis orbs where like you can uh wait what was it stasis orb? it was like it was something like that it's like good for stacks i just don't remember why but anyway mm, static, my brain is, static orb um, static orb yeah, static orb i think so i think so i forget why <clears throat> but anyway go ahead <laughs> Tell me I, mean, I mean, Seth, what did you do to Tomer? So, yeah, Tomer, Tomer is very traumatized by the Brago that he gave to me. I probably would have never played it if it wasn't for you giving it to me. I mean, so I think you hate the ETBs, right? Is that the uh, is that the easy like the Elish Norn or a Torpor Orb or a Hushbring? Like, stop yeah. your opponent from abusing that. But you could, Elish Norn, right? though, is Elish Norn. Band, Elish Norn. Right? Yeah, I thought it was too, too good. Going to break the format. But like. What other direction is there to go? Tomer's right that there's a lot of protection, so it's hard to deal with with targeted removal. The snowball is really hard to stop once it gets going because you're blinking stuff that's generating card advantage, making more mana by untapping your uh, mana rocks. What other options are there? Like, I guess okay, so we go I mean, back to the so fair well. player removal as an option, right? But yeah. there, there's a better option, what a- which is you win the game. You just combo off. Like, they're sure. blinking. They're like, you can't hit me, <laughs> right? You can't wrath me. I have, like, unlimited life. And you're just like, I don't know, Is second it- sunrise win or something, right? Like, just play Thassa's Oracle combo. win or something. Like, you, you combo and win the game and just ignore them. Like, Tomer said, okay. they're really slow at winning the game. Right, their protection is mostly blink spells. They're not running like a hand, like you know, like big suite of counter spells and things like that, right? So Hello. you let them do their thing. And then while the rest of the table is trying to band together to like wipe the board or something, you're just like I, I three card combo win the game. Thank you. See you. <laughs> you you know what's a card that is actually good and probably kind of underrated and could be played a lot more in Commander? Containment priest. Notion thief. Oh, okay. Containment priest. Ha, no. I put that on my sheets. Yeah. That, you, you, uh, like if we have like must kill non commanders, and we made a list, <laughs> it would be Crim's list. It'd be Notion <laughs> Thief, containment yeah. priest. You know what? I, mean, I was gonna say too narrow, but get you for killed. for a Brago meta, I would put in containment priest. What does it yeah, do? Hold Crim, on. You know, is containment priest even like BM? Like it's not even like that big of a deal, right? Just like don't <laughs> cheat stuff in. Play fair magic. <laughs> No, it's anti-blink, though. So it's a two-drop flash. Yeah. Uh, if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast exile instead. So if Brago, like, blinks everything, and then you'd be like, on Containment Priest, and then when they come back... <laughs> That's a very cool dead, eerie interlude. Decks. Literally worse than a grizzly bear. <laughs> no, wait, wait, no, 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 no. It, it has applications outside of just, like, the blink decks, though, right? Because, like, there's a lot of, like, reanimation. There's lots yeah, of, like, things like that. So, like... I don't see why you wouldn't. This is just a sweet card that's like kind of like eat your veggies. I would this, I would have this. This is a gift Brago the win card, I think. <laughs> yeah. Brago just sits there, does nothing. The whole table murders Krim. And then they use all the resources to murder Krim. And then Brago win? untaps and wins. <laughs> just wait, just wait until this is equipped with sort of body in mind. It, and then I'm going to town. And I I'm mean, going the, to town. The other issue is it only stops creatures, right? So you're only right. stopping like yeah. some percentage of what Brago does. You're not unstapping uh, the, the mana rocks from untapping, enchantments uh, from being blanked, which now have ETB triggers. I don't uh, think it's bad against Brago, but I it doesn't actually fully shut down Brago either. So I mean, that's the Elish combo Norn. plan. Is that is that it? We just I mean, I think Brago it's a little bit ridiculous. I think it's actually kind of funny that we're like Yashar, no, no, stacks. Players aren't going to like it. And then we come to Brago and we're just, yeah, just combo up. Splinter twin them. Many <laughs> <laughs> players, they love getting comboed up. <laughs> we can- yeah, it just has to be a three card combo. He deserves it. Three card combo. <laughs> he deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they're 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 meant to play the fairest game on earth. You can't beat yeah. them at it, right? Like they're they're no. designed to drag the game on and. You can't kill them because they have like 8 million blockers that are disposable. You can wrap them. They don't even care because there's just like disposable creatures. Trample. Uh, like nothing, none of this matters, right? You just got to ignore trample. them. 
I kill. Oh, trample. If you can trample, like, like a, a real thing that isn't like if you're feeling like these recommendations are too niche, the net's not wide enough. Literal trample. <laughs> oh, I remember the stacks piece. It wasn't static or stasis. Everybody's favorite. Oh, it's the best stasis yeah. deck because you just <laughs> instead of untapping your normal way, you just attack with Brago. You blink everything, including Brago, so they all untap. Oh, ouch. Have you ever yeah, been that's... stasis locked with Brago? At least you can concede. <laughs> With confidence, then you could just say yes. I can't win. So that's like that's a blessing, actually. Brago decks, please run stasis, so we can just go move on, please. Right. I def. I I've been stasis locked by a, a, a what is it, <sighs> Lavinia, the two mana one. I got locked out by that. That was nice. great. <laughs> Crim's play group is very telling. Here. <laughs> Crim, hit us with your must kill commander. Uh, another one I think uh, is, f- you know, Miram, Sentinel Worm. This one was from Commander Legends or Baldur's Gate or whatever. Uh, and it's a three and green, blue, red, flying ward two. Whenever another non token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a copy that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. This card is nuts. Like, I this is one of those ones where, like, the board is going to get overrun. We're talking casual, so, like, games are going to go long, right? So, like, yeah, like, this card is absolutely nuts. Combined with something like a Terror of the Peaks, which I didn't know that card is, like, $40 now. Yeah. Uh, like, Two Terrors like, on the battlefield, that's, like, GG, alrighty. Yeah. Then if they have, like, Dragon Tempest, like... I think the one thing every dragon player does, including myself, because you know my real my the my my Morophon dragon deck, because it's a real dragon. Uh, like the one thing here deck. is, it's a real dragon deck. Uh, and so, the one thing is, like every dragon deck plays this slow game, looks super not threatening, and then all of a sudden, there's like a million dragons. Well, this is like that, but amplified, and they are also getting now double of their legendaries. Are you kidding me? You know how miserable, like, how difficult that is to beat two Dragon Lord Atarkas, like, with haste and all of that? Or, like, whatever, Atarka World Render? This thing is just pooping out dragons left and right. So, I I think at a casual table, this is one that looks unassuming, and then you very quickly find out, well, you know, the mess around and find out chart. <laughs> that meme? Yeah, this this is on that chart. It has ward. Has there is, is I mean, it's only it's ward two. two. It's not a yeah. very good ward. Except I you think don't so. even I've, pay the one. You I've don't played. even pay the one. Why yeah. would make you think you're gonna pay the ward two? I've, so I've played Miram before. I played Miram my Commander Clash, and it went horribly. I didn't do yes. anything. There's a very easy way to stop Miram. So Miram it, it is incredibly strong. But it's also six mana, and it doesn't do anything until you play another dragon. And dragons tend to be pretty expensive creatures. So it's usually very difficult to play Miram and another dragon in the same turn. So my sure. experience with Miram is you play Miram and you like cross your fingers and pray really hard that no one interacts with it as everyone goes around the table. And if they don't, then sure, you're going to win the game probably. But most of the time <laughs> they do. So I would say, even though I hate this answer because it applies to so many commanders, this really is a just kill it a couple times. Kind of like what you were saying about <laughs> Prosper, Tomer. Like if you kill Miram once or twice and it costs 10 mana, it suddenly becomes a not that scary commander like it's just too much mana to really do anything then you just start the casting your eyes to do blade to give up to it the problem <laughs> though is seth who wants to pay that ward to right <laughs> right like if they're using spot removal <laughs> second off now we're going into the late game these decks are dragon decks so they actually if you can kill miram enough times sure Maybe you stop the Miram train, but what about literally just every other dragon in their hand now, I guess? But, you, but you, yeah, you can never a, get value with Miram on the same turn, yeah. right? Like, if you're going to yeah, play Miram sure, and, hard. like, a four drop, that's, like, ten mana. Like, it's impossible, yeah. right? So, you don't I mean, but even need the, like, you play Miram and someone just sweeps the board and you're super sad, right? You like, sure you can play boots so. on it and that doesn't help you. So, I think... My answer I, is our revelation to everything. And this is a very <laughs> our revelation answer here. I can ignore the ward. Uh, I, I could like, you know, it's six mana. I have so much time to dig for my sweeper. And, I, I you know, I can prepare, right? I don't, yeah. you know, if on turn five I want to sweep, I'm like, maybe I'll just wait one more turn to make sure Miriam doesn't come down and sweep. So it's super I mean, do you, choreographed. Do you know dragon decks that, you know, 
do things like on curve, like at six, because I feel like with green in there, you know, they're obviously ramping. The, the, you all know yeah, that, right? The best sweepers cost down to one mana or two mana. I mean, fair. So you're it's good not a fair. dragon deck, but like, I think this is one of the easiest ones where like, it's feast or famine. Like, you don't let her untap. And if you do successfully kill her, then they just have to play their 99. Yeah. Okay, they're just yeah. a, they're a team or dragon deck, but they're basically without their commander, which I mean is, is far more manageable. It's just like it if is. you let Miram untap, then, well, <laughs> you deserve now you learn. Sort of, yeah, now you learn like, not to. So, so does that <laughs> you not make Miram a huge threat then? Like, because oh, it's, it is a must kill commander. It, by it, like, it, it must kill very one, much I is must very kill. In- like Sith is for example, you can't really just kill her. Like that's not an answer. This is like you have well, like this is two mana, so I mean. you have like four turns <laughs> I, at least to find an answer. Like, uh, like stockpile it, it's, an answer. It's deal-able with things yeah. already in your deck as opposed to us yeah. playing containment priest and random <laughs> stacks piece and stuff like that, right? This is like you have spot removal and sweepers, just save them for Miro, right? Can you and imagine you run Crux of Fate and you just choose and, like, destroy all dragons? Uh, I'm just gonna like that. Wow. Just that get them so good. <laughs> so good. I mean, it feels it, so good to do that. <laughs> I, I would say Ur-Dragon's more scary to me as a dragon oh, commander. Oh, like, close. that one is way... You don't like, you don't get the turn. That one doesn't even need to get the it, battlefield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you can do about that, right? So, for the sake of the, this you episode, you uninvite know? the player from the pod. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> out of here. Uh, You're out of here. The seat yeah. is taken. <laughs> Every, my friend is coming. My, everybody Tell lost how my dragon So deck. many of your commanders are on this list, dude. <laughs> that, that Brago deck, you Wait. made it. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Oops. <laughs> but Earth Dragon's not even on this list, thank God. Because I would yeah, I was gonna put it, but I'm like, well, what do you do to interact with it? Nothing. <laughs> we we did not have anything to say about this. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you can't stop it. Yeah. I, I, I feel right. like is this an intervention? What what's going on? Here? <laughs> <laughs> Seth, what do right. you have for us? You, you said my last commander wasn't uh, wasn't uh, hateable enough, I guess. So we're gonna we're gonna amp it up a little bit with Urza Lord High Artificer. So. Urza is a four mana blue commander. It's a one four. When he ETBs, you make a Karnstruct, a zero zero construct that gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. You can tap an artifact to add a blue mana, and you can pay five mana to shuffle your library and play a random card off the top of your deck for free. It is a lot of text. It does a lot right away, which is very, very frightening. Like, worst case, let's say you have the instant speed removal. It's leaving behind a construct, and your opponent can potentially tap a bunch of artifacts to make a bunch of mana to maybe even just recast the Urza right away if they have a big board full of artifacts. Uh, or they can just spin with it to try to get something for free. It also has a ton of infinite combo potential. It also, also is one of the best, like, static orb stasis orb commanders, because you can do the trick where you, like, play the static orb and everyone's locked under it and then on the end step before your turn you just tap it to urza to make a mana quote unquote but really you're just freeing your mana because those artifacts only work if they're untapped so you get all your mana none of the rest of the table gets their mana so it's like a stacks commander and a combo commander and it's only four mana and it helps pay for its own command tax sort of with the artifacts it's it's ridiculous so how do you actually fight in urza do, do you have any ideas Notion Thief. No, I'm kidding. Notion <laughs> Thief, yes. Card. Yeah, it, Notion Thief. No. Uh, Notion Thief. Our revelation. <laughs> Notion Thief. But you, you couple the Poseju because now they've got access to blue and they can counter your Our revelation. <laughs> this is what but we're you wipe all the artifacts off the battlefield, including the Construct, including the Urza. If they want to respond by flipping something in, it's dying too. So it's mm -hmm. hope you don't die, Sweeper, and hope it Filter doesn't get countered. Out as well <laughs> yeah that's that's a lot of hoping a lot of hoping I'm, yeah. I'm not even joking here like without like doing the whole like it's always sunny charlie day pinboard cork <laughs> plan that richard's got there filter out I mean, like these are these are like outside Wait, is of that like the, the bounce obvious... all non creatures thing. It's yeah, good, it's a good board wipe. Oh god, it's a, it's a good green board mana. <clears throat> and then on top of that, like it resets a lot of their stuff. Almost and on top of that. Win. Like, yeah, like, okay, well, no, no, no. Wait, did you just <laughs> pitch a card that doesn't even answer Urza to answer Urza? Doesn't, it only well, doesn't it, even bounce creatures, does it? It's rid of his Karnstruct. No, but it gets it doesn't rid, even of get rid of all... the Karnstruct. No, it keeps it the Karnstruct. Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the good, though. It keeps the Urza, Urza as well. <laughs> Let him cook. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, we, we, we bounce the stuff around the Urza or we shut down the stuff around it with like stony silence effects, right? Like these are these are like real like Karn, like again, coming up hot. Uh, like I've no matter how casual like you think you build a, a, an artifact deck, it's still an artifact deck. I don't care which artifact commander it is. I will always treat it as the highest threat at the table. This is this is going to surpass even Eureka. This is going to surpass like all of that for me. Urza and any artifact deck is pretty high up there on my must kill list. Well, and then it goes Nibbis. But, but Karn doesn't area, stop this, right? right? Like you can still tap artifacts for yeah, mana, because Urza's and the doing it. Yeah, because Urza is still huge. Yeah. yeah, and he can still flip things into play. So Karn also, is maybe a band aid if the you know the rest of the deck is, is mana rocks or something. But there's a world where you, it, you play Karn and Urza doesn't actually care whatsoever about it and just keeps. But you out. need you need to slow them down, and that's all you can do, right? Like you have to slow them down because they have so many moving parts. Uh, and if you can shut that part down, then you can answer Urza, right? Like like. You can maybe like board wipe or something a few times and whatnot, but like you do need to shut down those artifacts. They cannot Art be there. Artifact sweepers are very good. It, it is true that Urza on an empty board is not that scary. Like it's a one four. It makes a one one. Uh, it makes one extra mana. Like it's not a big deal. So Vandal Blast, anything to just keep artifacts off the battlefield. Going back to the farewells, our revelations, being a progress, a steward command, anything that can just like keep the Urza players board from having a ton of artifacts because that's when Urza becomes a like, I come down and potentially win the game the turn I come into play. When there's a big board full of artifacts, that's when it's making a ton of mana, spinning into free spells, maybe comboing off, locking the table out of the game. So I think you need to preemptively be prepared to keep the artifacts off the battlefield. Once Urza hits the battlefield on a big board, it's, I think, almost too late a lot of times to answer it from that point, especially against a blue deck. You have to, like, you have to hit them first, like... You have to prune their artifacts constantly, and you have to hit them so they're cast. Like they might have to be forced to cast Urza early before they're prepared to defend him. And one one of my favorite, actually, that if if there was an Urza in my table and I was having a struggle with it with my deck, and I was in red, the the Crim Special Brotherhood's End destroy all artifacts <sighs> with mana value yes. three or less. But it also doubles as a board wipe, so it has some flexibility, dealing three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. So I think that card. Uh, I would definitely be slotting into my red decks if there was like an Urza How fitting. at the meta. Yeah, that that would be the answer to yeah. the Brotherhood's or, End, right? A flavorful. Beat Urza. <laughs> but yeah, like, like being really in progress, good. anything that's mass artifact removal, artifact decks will, especially in blue ones, because blue doesn't really have a lot of mass artifact uh, recursion. Like you need to be in like red at the very least, or like I guess like I don't know, like white. Um, but like in blue, like if you just mass board wipe all the artifacts, it's very difficult for them to to just get it back and bounce back unless they drew like a billion cards beforehand. All right. Uh oh, it's my turn. What do you got? We're, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to twenty. 12 or something. Okay, I don't know when this card was released. Ooh, it's a boomer 2013. card. Okay? 2013. Ah, uh, back to my youth. <laughs> Nexar the Mind Razor. Five mana Grixis Legendary Zombie Wizard. 2 4. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Nexar deals one damage to that player. So a little howling God, mind with a little card. mini shoulder effect. You when I started playing Magic, everyone's like, "You can't, you cannot let Nekasar untap. You cannot let Nekasar untapped." And I'm pretty sure we've died to Nekasar wheel many, many times. Uh, is this still a must kill in 2023? Is the shoulder just better? <laughs> I mean, I think that this card is definitely not where it once was, but it's still. Pretty solid, right? You still like, can't let them untap with it. Though, yeah, like right? yeah, <laughs> still there's no you. way, right? Because like, like it's not just Nekasar is going to be pinging you and like, woe is me. It's like they're going to have obviously Notion Thief in their deck. They're obviously going to have hey. set in their deck. <laughs> so card. you're not just losing your, you're not just like drawing cards and getting pinged. You're losing your entire hand. Um, they just order, they just made Orcish Bowmaster, so that's yeah, going to the deck as well. The old like, grid works wheels, with get, it. wheels are getting better and better. The thing is that like Nekasar, like. If you untap with him, this is like this is like Miram. Like, if you untap with him, yeah, you're probably going to instantly regret it. But at least he's five mana in Grixis colors. He's not in green, and he doesn't have like ward or any nonsense. So you just you kill him like twice, and he's still gonna wheel you and be a, a little rapscallion. He'll probably notion thief wheel you or something if you let him move long <laughs> enough. But 
It's you're not gonna go for Nekasar, and then they just like no shit thief wheel you. <laughs> yeah, like that's what I was gonna say. The problem is this kind of deck doesn't need just Nekusar, right? Yeah. It has don't believe their lies. Of, it has so <laughs> many other things that can just do what Nekusar does. And having you know, this was my first like after Thrax, like this was like the first real deck that I put together, and that's it cool. was time of my life. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I I've learned. Very quickly that I could win games without my commander. So the and like any answers you might have, let's just say don't get too attached, <laughs> right? Like like don't get too attached to things in your hand. If you can't, because you want to almost fire off spells instantly. Don't try to do the value play. I am the biggest advocate for taking the greediest line so that when you get punished, you feel terrible. But. In this matchup, and, and when this is on the board, I will never get greedy. I will kill this. I will kill this. I will not wait. I will not wait until you untap. I will do it right now. I mean, this... the wheel to draw seven cards. <laughs> is this one where you just be like, just kill the commander? Or what? what's what's the tech that we have against a Tinker Sword deck if he's not it's, reliant on the commander? Do you just kill the so player? It's so hard. You That's kill the, the player. Problem. Yeah, kill Krim first. Kill Krim first. You, you gotta, is, it, yeah. is this now <laughs> we can finally say Notion Thief is the answer all along? <laughs> notion maybe, Thief actually they are playing good, notion right? Thief. Yeah, but what, yeah. Else, what if you need to beat a bad Notion Thief with a good Notion Thief? I don't know. <laughs> There's bowmasters, you know, the draw punishers are really nice, but yeah. in all seriousness, there's a also a lot of a lot of the punish like the draw punish and pain effects come from enchantments. So, outside of Nekusar, everything else is like spiteful visions, um, you know, underworld dreams, things like that. So you do need to pretty much like all and for those that don't know, those are just all effects where if you draw a card, you lose a life, right? Like so that you're, there's a critical mass of those, and they're trying to do that. Maybe Psychosis Crawler and things like that as well. So you really want to just make sure Artifact Enchantment Hate is huge here. That's, like, specifically Enchantment more than anything else. Uh, so if you if you can blow up their enchantments, do not let them build an enchantment. Do not wait. <laughs> like, it's just, like, do not wait till they deploy that Teferi's Puzzle Box. Like, like this is this is one of those things where Enchantment and Artifact Hate must go. They cannot build a critical mass of them. Don't even let them get to two. I feel this card's gotten worse because you can now wheel your opponents into very legitimate answers. Like the first wheel and they've and your opponent like draws an Orcish Bowmasters, like you are so sad. <laughs> right? Or if people just play children for value, you can no longer wheel. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do so there, there are like things value? that just like randomly stop Nekasar now just due to like power creep and like Free spells, like, you, you don't want to keep wheeling your opponents into, like, free spells and, like, other free interaction and things like that, right? So, maybe he self-corrected himself a bit by the power creep. Like, <laughs> imagine wheeling your opponent into a Bowmasters. Like, that that is, like, <laughs> disgusting, right? They're like, thanks, I'll draw seven cards for seven life. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I guess it depends on your meta. But I know, like, I don't know if everybody's running these cards, but I definitely know Nikasaur is running those cards. So like yeah. I don't know I don't yeah. want him I even even so I wouldn't leave Nekasaur alone because I know they're running Bowmaster I know we, they're we've running. We've done shoulder. the greedy keep. We're like I can remove Nekasaur, but I want to wheel. <laughs> I need to wheel my hand. I need to wheel my <laughs> no, hand, and I'll, you, I'll like, find well. an answer in the new seven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we've done Everybody, all been there. That is I right. think I do like drawing cards. Draw seven, you say. <laughs> I think that's we'll, one of the we'll biggest mill him out. lies that anyone has ever thought to them. Maybe we'll mill them out against Nekusar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the same as the maybe we'll mill them out game. Plan because if you think mm. that you need a wheel and you're gonna get that the cards, you may be lying to yourself. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. All right, Tober, hit us, hit us with a must kill commander. Okay, uh, so I was gonna go with um like an old school one, Krenko Mob Boss, but I think that's that's pretty uh, straightforward. Just literally, just kill the commander. Uh, I wanted to go with something more spicy, more topical. So the most popular commander in the in the last two months, according to EDH Rec, is actually a new one uh, from Lord of the Rings. Something that um, two of my co-hosts rated as a B, as a B, yep. and Stand uh, by I think it. Uh, well, we, oh, okay, well it's <laughs> it's Sauron the Dark Lord. It's a six mana Grixis. Deck? 
Avatar <laughs> Horror 7 6, that one exactly. Uh, Ward, sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. So if you want to target with its spell or ability, you got to also sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. Um, and then whenever an opponent casts a spell, a mass orcs one. So it's like a Torian Mauler essentially that it's, he's regrowing. Um, and then whenever an army control deals combat damage to play, the ring tempts you. And whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand if you do draw four cards. So I, me and Seth, uh, me and Krim, uh, rated this as an S tier uh, threat uh, in the Commander Clash podcast uh, last last or uh, two weeks ago. So you can go check that out. Uh, yes, yes. Seth and Krim, uh, Seth and Richard though were not convinced. There was a B. What did they give Sauron? Uh, bees, bees, bees. Uh, I think they like- put they put the Necromancer Sauron. The Necromancer is higher rated to it. Um, so, uh, what do you think now that he played it in Commander Clash? What do you think? Do you, do you, uh, what, what, if you see a Sauron, the Dark Lord at the table, are you like, this must die? Or are you like, no, nah, he's chill? No. I mean, he's, no, no, he's very good. He's still a high He's, still a a high he's very good. Not but I, I would actually, of the list we presented so far, he is the least must kill, I think. Like, he gets Ooh. a lot of value, but it's not insane. Uh, it is true I, that. Agreed. It didn't really Actually. kill us, right? Like it. Yeah, it like sits around. It's like very scary and is annoying and... us. <laughs> yeah. Well, it to be fair, kill. nothing really killed us because everything died. <laughs> yeah, but imagine, imagine if a Div visit was at that table. The game was over. <laughs> okay. Div visit like... wouldn't get a chance to untap because there's literally a board wipe every single turn. I I I literally never untapped a single time with Aragorn. I cast Aragorn like five <laughs> times. I've never gone yeah. into the untap phase. So I don't even think Niv Mizza would have been a problem that game. I think no creature was a problem. I was like, pretty proud to say that I at least had like Sauron for a turn cycle. That a was turn nice. Cycle. That was, that that was, was the longest boss cycle. because he, he had a no. massive army. Like it, Sauron was doing work. No, he, no, no, no. I had, tacked I up had the commander army. damage, right? Yeah. But it's like, there's a reason why we had to board up every single turn. <laughs> I. I do think, though, like, yeah, I don't think it's, like, the the highest arch enemy commander, but I do think with its popularity, it is worth considering as you're building your decks, and I think there's actually a good kind of card that answers it, which is edicts that specifically care about, like, the biggest creature or non-token creatures. I think those are cards that are go up a lot in value. Something like Soul Shatter. I know I've been kind of harsh on Edicts and Commander, but their specific ones I think are really good. Soul Shatter is three mana. Each opponent sacks the creature or Planeswalker. They control with the highest mana value. You're getting each of your opponent's most expensive things for three mana. Yeah. Even she, uh, she Altered's Edict. Each opponent sacks a non-token creature. You snipe the Sauron. The mass doesn't get in the way. The mass is the problem with normal edicts i think blot out was a new one from uh aftermath that also does something similar to soul shatter so those are cards that i think i'm going to try in my decks more often in part because of sauron and in part because i think they might actually just be pretty good if you the problem with edicts is you get the worst creature but these edicts get around that why would you run an edict and not a board wipe like you're just trying to dodge the ward right like the ward is like this is actually legitimate protection you can't get through it just use the a board wipe never. rather than this like very situational edicts, which well, may or may not I help mean, you anywhere else, so, right? So, Richard, we have this thing where all of our commander games go three hours. My new theory <laughs> is maybe yeah. I will try to keep my board and just kill my opponent's stuff so yeah. I can attack them and our games will end. It's it very kind of you to preserve my board as well, Seth, with your ineffective edicts. Thank I you. I like how we were like all gung ho about, yeah, less target removal, more board wipes. And then, like, after three hour marathons, we're like, actually, maybe. Yeah. Source yes, but is coming no. back. Yes, but I mean, no. On the board. answers That's pop them. off. I never, <laughs> I never, I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm on board with board wipe. Look, like, game. I like, keep comboed like one time, and you guys gave me crap for it for like four years. So maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, just saying, you, you can keep combo any time. Thank you. Was it really only once? It. I feel like I yeah, feel it was like, like so much more than that. I feel like I've seen you try it numerous just, times. No, no. <laughs> I mean, the edict, by the way, that Seth is talking about, Shieldra's edict, I think, is one that is actually kind of underrated in Commander. I think that card is really good. I think that card. But that's is really the non-token good. one, right? Yeah, your choice. Yeah. A token, yeah, that, that one's tough. I think because you can have two non-tokens, but the the mana value one. I think is pretty good. Like even if you don't snipe the Sauron, you're sniping like a seven 
man of value car is probably <laughs> worth it, right? So I think that one is actually pretty good. I mean, Another. I've already sung the praises of edicts, so I, I, yeah. I think y'all know how I feel. You're going a little too far because you're firing off like diabolic edicts and whatnot. But <laughs> whoa, whoa, they're whoa, also whoa. no, no, no. <laughs> they're also whoa, instance, whoa. which is the other yeah. the other upside compared to RAS. Like sometimes being instant speed does actually matter. I have that a will. You have a blocker though. To, to I have no a evasion on Sauron ball. or the <laughs> the RV. <laughs> I have a curveball though. What, so Edix, I, I agree the, the Soul Shatter in particular, I really like a lot. But what do you think? Maybe if uh, there was there was a certain mechanic that uh, defeated Sauron in Lord of the Rings. It's the ring tempted you. The ring bearer was the one who defeated Sauron. Um, what if we just started running a little bit more ring tempts you card? You you put the ring bearer on like a random like one one soldier token. How do you force the block? Then, Wait. No, no, you just now you have now you can get around ward. You're like, oh, I need to I need to sacrifice a legendary creature. Well, my ring bearer, uh, Johnny, the one one soldier uh, that I've conscripted uh, this turn, uh, he will hold the ring and go to drop it off in Mordor and Mount Doom. And now Sauron dies. What if that the Sauron deck that is ninety nine percent removal spells? <laughs> Who's gonna remove just, Johnny? No, but that's Johnny? it's part of the it's part Who's of the kill cost, Johnny? right? So you could like. Ring bearer. I don't know if Sauron wants to start so killing you. You're gonna go through one, all his effort to two for one yourself. Okay. <laughs> no, but it's, well, like, but it's, no, it's because a two for one is... is like a random one mm-hmm. one that I don't care about. So I haven't come around to the ring temps you being strong enough for me to want to put it like try to force it into every deck the way I really love Monarch. But I do think that's a cool trick to keep in mind, right? Like, if you are playing ring temps you cards, that's actually a really sneaky way to get rid of Sauron that I actually really like. But I don't know if that's going to make me, like, fill my deck with Sam's and Frodo's. Bilbo's just, escape. Just in I case I run one. into yeah. Sauron. Bilbo, the <laughs> retired rogue. Ambush yeah. Dude, Bilbo, retired rogue, is Ooh. gas. is a three drop that tempts you two times. Blinks. And also when it attacks, it's a one three. So it has, like, Skulk, really good ring bear. And it makes you a treasure every single turn. Like, Wait, that card is actually not skulk. bad. <laughs> the ring gives you Skulk. skulk. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, one, it's a 1-3 yeah, yeah. that ETBs, gives itself Skulk, and then every single time it deals combat damage to a player, you make it a treasure token. Is that not actually, like, decent? I think that's decent. I think he's sweet. I think he's sweet. Yeah. I think that's awesome. So Sauron and has no evasion. Sauron. The orc has no evasion. I guess if you play a 2020 and the, the armies uh, are in there, The block. evasion <laughs> comes with all the creatures that are attached to it. Right? Like, yeah, you have you Gleaming Overseer... It. You, you have like, like you, you know you just a one one death toucher will just stop this orc army and have it beat your opponents down. Right? Mm-hmm. Like just, just a blocker not, will get you there. I really, I, I think, think that's going to actually work because <clears throat> they're going to give it trample. They're going to give it flying. They'll put yeah, yeah, really, the you building your Sauron deck to give your orc army trample. No, no but not. you can Mine discard is. wonder right whenever you tempted by the ring. You just discard wonder to you give your entire board flying and stuff. Baleful Strix. I, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> just randomly die because Sauron got a, got away got around my skull winder one time to hit me for twenty damage. What you about want to die goad? because you couldn't tempt the ring in time to sack the yes. board? Because I you want to die because Johnny failed to, remove the to drop the ring in, in Mount Doom. That's how I want to go, right? I'm not going to blame Johnny for my ills. <laughs> All right. Uh, Krim, who do we have? Yes. So speaking of like old commanders that used to be kind of kill on sight, right? I'm curious if this one still holds up. Marin of Clan Neltoth. Now, if you don't remember this commander, uh, probably because people probably rule zeroed it out, um, it's two green black or black green. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your end step, choose target creature card in your graveyard. If that card's converted mana cost is equal to uh, is less than the number of experience counters you have, return it to the battlefield. Otherwise, put it to your hand. Like. Is this card still not nuts? I think this card is still pretty yeah. darn good. It's a slow, grindy game, but like <clears throat> at some point, there's just so many loops that it gets that you essentially are locked out, right? Like you're down to one creature, then they just loop like Plague Crafter mm-hmm. every turn. Every turn. Or if you want to attack much... them, Spore Frog every single turn. Foggy, <laughs> yep. Foggy, yep. foggy, foggy. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, as as time. Seth is also a fellow enjoyer of Spore Frog, I do like he, uh, frogs. <laughs> like like the this commander used to be one of the most miserable commanders to play against because you know like no matter what you did it came back even if you had graveyard hate 
as long as the Marin player didn't just like fill their yard up entirely out of nowhere randomly, they would be able to outlast your hate, right? They just find, wait for the Caustic Caterpillar or something like that and then just blow it up. And now they've got even better answers than Caustic Caterpillar, whatever that uh, super might is that exiles. Uh, and it's it, it, like there's so many ways for them to answer your graveyard hate nowadays that I feel like this is still one of the best ways to grind, right? I mean, it's it's still a very good value engine, like Graveyard Card. Reminds me a little bit of Madrolfa, which is another maybe kill on site commander that kind of functions in the same way. I do think, though, like, one of the nice things about trying to beat it is it is very reliant on the graveyard. And yeah, it does have answers to the graveyard hate, but we also keep getting better graveyard hate. There's like that new dinosaur from Aftermath with the Tormod script. We're getting more and more like cards that aren't embarrassing to have in my deck that also happen to hate the graveyard. Unfortunately, none of us are responsible and we don't play as much graveyard hate as we should. But isn't that just a solution? Just like throw a few more cards with incidental graveyard hate into your deck and that should hopefully make it it's not gonna stop it but it's gonna like make it fair enough hopefully that you can play a normal game with it is there ever a fair normal game with this card though i just feel <laughs> like you, you, you can grind harder than marin like that's the problem can you? Right? like yes you're drawing a card every yeah. turn but you have set up and it can be disrupted but all of these commanders can draw multiple cards a turn Right, yeah, and, this is and they actually awesome have a win con. This is kind of like the the Brago issue, right? You can grind for as long as you want, but your <laughs> win con is like very slow and telegraphed. So yes, you're getting value, but I can ignore you and Thoracle eventually, or you know I can just be building just as much value as you as we go along, and we're gonna see whose end game is better, right? So I would say it's not even would must kill. I would, I would oh, just let him oh, oh, play oh, it. Oh, oh. And eventually, I, okay. when that graveyard gets stocked, you might have to do something about it. But, like, I wouldn't... If I had to source the plowshares in hand that you put in my deck, <laughs> I would not fire it off a of Mirren here. Oh, no. I would fire I, it off on, like, a Niv-Mizzet. Oh, right? okay. I, I so think... Been demoted. Oh, we're just we're just blinded by the snowballiness of recent cards, I think. Like, that Mirren's still a really strong card, the problem is it doesn't just snowball into a win by itself quickly. I think we're just like, our perception of what makes a good commander is tainted by uh, Jodas and Winotas and uh, uh, Eurekos, the other cards we've been talking about that are just like, if this sticks on the battlefield for like two or three turns, the game's going to end. Uh, Mirren doesn't really do that, so it might not look as scary, but I still think it's a really strong card that over the course of like a long game will grind you out, right? I still think it deserves to be considered must-kill, it's just not maybe quite as muscular <laughs> stuff printed in the last call couple it of years. Must kill if you don't kill it. <laughs> like, it's very strong, but it's just must, not must, must kill. Must maybe, be aware of. Must kill maybe. eventually, okay. but must kill yeah, okay, immediately. Okay, okay not. must kill eventually. on the watch list. Got on the it, watch, on the watch list. Yeah. I like the watch list. Uh, yeah, I think this one is one of the weaker must kills of the bunch, but it's still very, very strong, and it's gonna is very good at grinding. It's just that it's capped to reanimating one thing per turn. Um, which is like almost quaint in the world of like prospers and stuff like that. It's still very strong. And I, well, last time I, I played against it, I lost. I dropped the, I dropped a rest in peace on them, and they just still grinded out the, the entire table. They they one v three the entire table with like a uh, tribute to the world tree. They just have tribute to the world tree down, and they just like outdrew everybody and still kill us with a rest of peace on the battlefield. They didn't even use the raven, but that's more of a green is very good these days. Yeah. Type issue. <laughs> I mean, okay, so so you all think then that this card has fallen from where it once was then? I think so. I, like, I, I'm I, it's been tower creeped. I will right? like, kill yeah. it. It's still like, strong, though. It can still win the game. I feel I like. I mean, sure. Yeah, the value of the cruise is slower than these other ones. So. Must I, kill it to I'm be still, like, ah, you could give it I'm a turn. I'm still scared of it. If it everything was like must kill, I'd be like, ah, you could give it like one or two turns. Let's see what happens. Yeah, like, like <laughs> <laughs> so then it's not a must kill. It's kill it, kill it soon. It must kill yeah, eventually. It's must kill eventually. But everything is must kill. Uh, like, keep an eye on it. Yeah. 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 Keep an eye on it. But at, like, let's just say of the, like, okay, we'll, we'll do a ranking at the end. We'll talk okay. about it at the end. Okay. 
Oh, we have one more. You want my last one card? Uh, okay, yeah, I, got, card I, got, I, got, I got an easy one. I got an easy one for you. This one does win the game very quickly and right away if you get it set up. And that's Winota, Joiner of Forces. One of the rare aggro commanders that actually competes in CDH, apparently. But a 4 yeah. mana 4 4. When a non human creature you control attacks, you look at the top six cards of your library and you can put a human from among those cards on the battlefield tapped in attacking and it gets indestructible. The rest go on the bottom. Important thing to note about when Nota, this doesn't just trigger when you attack, it triggers for each non-human creature. So if you have three or four non-humans, you're going to be digging six cards deep three or four times. So a lot of times a Winota player is going to be able to set up a pretty big board and just play Winota, immediately swing. It's not when Winota attacks either, it's when any human uh, non-human attacks, and just immediately put a game-ending combination of creatures or build a massive board or stacks pieces that keep you from doing anything. Uh, so Winota... How do you stop this one? I think my easiest answer is, I think of it almost like your Rico, where, yeah, you can stop, you can kind of stop it instant speed with like a source to plowshares effect. Like you can kill it before, uh, in the first main phase, before it gets the combat triggers. But maybe an easier way is just to keep the support pieces off the battlefield. Just like your Rico needs cheap threats to ninjutsu off of. When not on empty board, doesn't really do anything because there's nothing to trigger it. So, I think that would be my technique, but I'm curious if you have other ideas. Containment priest. Yeah, containment priest. Containment priest, containment priest actually <laughs> the stock is keeps going higher. That is no, that I, is actually a good answer. That shuts down your Rico too. Actually, come to think of it, yes. I actually disagree yes. with, with with Seth though. I think this is one of those commanders that if you kill it like three times, it just you can ignore the deck now. Because like it's so much of it is so like you can play like you're playing like these crappy like. Uh, Two mana, make two creatures on the battlefield, swing at you. Um, I mean, they're playing mana I, dorks. You're, right? you're, you're half, half uh, they're the playing deck stacks. They're creatures. playing. They usually the play hate bears, right? Strong. It's Winota. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're playing you're, Winota hate bears usually. Yeah. So you're, like, I don't know. You kill Winota mm-hmm. a couple times. They have no card advantage engine. They're just kind of sitting there. Hating you're right, on you. but it's worth mentioning, like. The window is very narrow. This isn't yes. a Miram where it's like, pass it around the table once. As long as someone has interaction, we're fine. This is, you need instant speed removal that you can cast before yeah. I go to my first combat step. So you're right if that works, instant. but you do really got to have instant speed removal to stop that first attack step or else it can it can go wrong in a hurry with just one attack step. Yeah, and because they are right. stacks. This is four mana, right? So yeah. your it is. sweeper needs to be low costed and you need to fire it off right because the board is going to be like three goblin tokens you're like do i use my sweeper this is ridiculous this but is you have literally to. the source <laughs> right? of like, like, commander like you have to right yeah this is literally this the is the argument for command. swords and path you yeah gotta. hear me <laughs> ghostly prison oh. costs three mana <laughs> oh my god that and then you let stop. them lay their stuff and then you wrath them <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing is time to go off <laughs> It doesn't even really work, though, because I think you can put the, the Winota the, the creatures into, into play, play attacking yeah, through yeah. the ghostly yeah. prison. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> so they, they have you. combo lines, and they have it just stacks lines. Like, yeah. So even if they aren't ki- literally killing you for the attack, all they right, might so put So we all play Swords to Plowshares? That was how we Kill on we, Kill on site. Never we, stopped. We have been, <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't set the stop. I think Tover has stopped, too. I have most of the stop. I still run it in, like, half my decks, but I have been, like, that's only half. About it. That's not good for the best. Like, Sometimes they, they take it out for pure takedown. If I'm feeling feisty, ooh, 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 ooh I like that. Have enough, enough I mean, Richie, you don't gotta ask me. You know, I play spot removal. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you gonna fire it off though when they're attacking yes. me? I don't know what you better. Yeah, oh, geez, of course. You have to. <laughs> there's no that's the thing about Winota. She's so powerful that there's just no politicking to let her connect. No. Oh no, no, no. Right, like, Do like, not believe the Winota lies. No, no, no. That is never gonna is, end. Is well. it not safe to let her hit and then wrath? Can, can she actually combo Depen- with? See, no. Oh. I tr- I thought that once and then what happened? I got they they found some stack pieces that made it so like their stuff was like indestructible. I forgot. And then it's like, all right, cool. Well now this wrath doesn't work unless I exile, right? So it has to be an exiling wrath. So I don't know, because the thing is, you can't respond to whatever they put into play, right? Like it's like they just get it. 
Yeah, they, and there are, like, Boromir now is a, a human that can sack to give stuff indestructible. So there are risks, I guess, to just going on that. I'll take the hit and then, like, deal with it next turn. The other big risk is they also sometimes play, like, a bunch of double strike stuff. Angrath Marauders doubles all the damage. Blade Historian doubles all the damage. So there's also yep. a risk that you're going to be like, I'm just going to let this go and I'll deal with it during my turn. And they literally just four to you. Like, they hit the right, <laughs> the right things yeah. and you literally just die on the spot. So... It can work. Let me but tell I, you about my friend and savior to fairies protection. <laughs> Yo, that hero. Yeah, that's that card's the fog? hero. Does, Does fog, fog work here? Fog into wrath could work, assuming you have the right wrath. But that it does. Has, it does stop it. I don't think it's built to stop fogs. So if you fog every turn, you can let Winota just snowball through. Mill him out. Fog every turn. This, this eventually, they'll put all their creatures into play. <laughs> you just have a card to not die at instant speed, which is not source the plowshares. You, you, you use everything in your power to not be source the plowshares, and then you untap in Wrath, and then call it a day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's pretty much it. Like that. That, that is my notion. Exile, that's answer that's to literally everything. farewell. That's like Boromir will stop you, but. <laughs> Yeah, or uh, all, all is dust, the sacrifice sure. effect, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's a big edict. I like it. Okay, we, we, we've given, we've given uh, 12 commanders. Let, let's, let's get a little stack ranking here so that we yeah. know where we, we okay. end up here. What's, what's number one? Yuriko, right? Uncontested? Uh, actually, I want to say Winoda. As I, I, Winoda. I, I, I I've, mm. I've I've never seen Winota outside of CDH actually, so I don't like. That's is this is I this have. something you've seen in in the wild and casual? Like I think people yeah. just know. Uh, Do you see? I mean, in the so, casual tables. I have, I have, because a lot of people love ninjas. So they're like, oh, it's just a ninja deck. It's very casual, and then you're just like, and they they reveal like the temporal extortion type thingy or whatever, <laughs> temporal trespass, and you're like, I'll take fifteen. Ah, oh, it's just ninjas though. I think, I think Yuriko, Yuriko is unfortunately like she's the problem popular. is she is it she's a must kill, but it's so hard to interact with because if they have no a one answers, drop, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they have a one drop, then they go turn to Yuriko. It's like oh, so I, like so I guess she's goaded because of that. Elk. Yeah, there's boy, that's tough. There, I think there's a clear top tier of Yuriko, Winota, Urza, and Niv. I think for me, those four kind of stand out above the rest of the commanders we talked about. I'm fine with putting Eureka at number one, but among those four, I, I, I could see arguments for Winota or Urza being being equally powerful with Eureka. Maybe I dropped Winota down behind. one tier because she's so easy to do in with the Swords of Plasher. You, you need to have That's the swords, you never right? run. But if you have it, it's easy. Whereas yeah. these other, like Urza, Niv Visit, like, even with your answers, you're not guaranteed to get out of this. Right? Yeah, I guess like they can do it. They're drawing cards yeah. off yeah. their answers. They have extra mana. They, they, okay. They're doing stuff. And that's same as applied that. with, with Yuriko as well, by the way, because that's yeah. something. So, yeah, like, so I, think I, I think my rankings go Yuriko, Niv-Mizzet, Urza. Then I guess it's pr- actually Sithis. I think Sithis is very good. I, um, I, it could... I mean, not not like I guess it's like not so much Sithis as much as it is just literally the entire archetype and yeah, how it works. Enchantress is a very good archetype. Yeah. <laughs> it Enchantress is a good archetype. Is very good, yeah. but Sithis comes down so early and gains so much life, and like it's just one life. Everybody thinks that, but then all of a sudden, you know, they're fifty five, sixty. You know, like they're twenty life ahead of everybody else. So aggroing them out doesn't work as well either, and that's assuming you don't get like locked out by some no damage combo right like so i i actually think sithis beats out winota for me Whoa. because i think you can are we talking casual like non casual casual okay casual yeah. this is all I, speaking casual wait, wait what else is in the second tier so we're debating sithis winota is this where Prosper and Corvold go? I think I think personally I would for have me, Corvold. like Eureka, Nimizit, Winota, Urza. Those are all tier one yeah. for me. And then tier two, I'd probably put like Sithis, Brago, Corvold. Um and then tier three would I mean, be Winota's Fringo, gotta be in Prosper. there, right? There's no way yeah, Winota's yeah. below tier tier two. I put two. Winota tier one. Oh, oh, okay. like, I put, if you don't, I put yeah. Winota tier two. Because you need an like, instant speed removal spell, or you need to wipe the board like super early. Like that's really tough. Eh. I think, can't let yeah, her. That's... You can't, she can just cast and then attack, and then it's too late. Usually, I, usually I think, think. So that's what's how a... my deck building caters? 
Yeah. What's at the very bottom then? Like Marin? Is that like Marin oh, Nekuzar? Is that Marin. the lowest tier? So the pillars of old? The, yeah. the, the old one, the ones that were printed a decade ago, basically, like the ones that were printed a decade ago, plus the Lord of the Rings one. I, actually, yeah, I guess Sauron, Sauron might be in that no, same I, tier. I think Sauron is the lowest. Really? I think Sauron is the lowest. I would yeah. put Marin. It might lowest. be. Eh. I no, don't know. I, Marin, okay. Marin still Marin grinds. So, so if we do this like somewhat logically, so top tier would be Eureka, Urza, Niv, maybe, Niv. I think is the consensus. Yeah. And then yeah. the. The next tier, the next tier is Winoda, Cephas, Cephas, and Brago? what was the Brago? Okay, where's Corvold? Where's Corvold? I, I put Corvold. Oh, missing Tosper and Corvold. I put yeah. Corvold in tier two. I put Brago maybe, in the maybe tier. there's maybe there's just one big middle tier. Maybe there's three yeah. really good ones in Eureka, Urza, and Niv, and then, and then there's Marin three kind of media media bad ones with Sauron, like the, Nekuzar, there's the tier, and like if Marin. you don't kill it, you are going to sure. die, like pretty yeah. much yeah. guaranteed. Yeah. And yeah. then Which there's these... you might cross your fingers and hope middle tier like you're probably okay. And then you, the bottom you, tier yeah. is like I think I think how you, you Sauron yeah, has a couple bit. gives you a couple of yeah. turns. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, sure. Sauron's got to be at the bottom, right? Yep. I think he's got to be at the bottom. I, think Marin I mean, I guess think too. of it like which one is the one where like if you they they untap right that you like you pretty much are oh, it's over right like it's over so then that so that would be Niv Mizzet I think that's Eureka I love, doesn't matter if it's there or not um, <laughs> and, then, and then it's and Urza. probably Urza yeah, yeah Urza. right yeah, sure so then so then you go to the next which is like then Winota and then it's probably because like I think Prosper you can let them live well so, we like, also I don't, we're also skipped oh oh yeah Crank Design yeah. Yeah, see, so like, like I think Prosper mm. can live. So I think Corvald probably hits it, like in that tier, right? Where like we have Winota, we have Corvald, then we have like maybe then it'd be Sithis, right? And then it goes Nekusar, Miram, Marin. I agree. And then I think it's like Brago and Sauron, because well, Brago. Think- no From way, under, it's Brago. You gotta put respect to that. There's name. no way. There's no way Brog. Brog 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 Brog's better Marin. Okay. Brog, yeah. There's no yeah. way Brago's below Marin. Marin like, gets below back Brago. one thing each time. Brago is an. I, okay, I would say fair. better protection colors, and he gets like a thousand things back each time. Okay. Although so honestly, then, like the middle group. We're kind of splitting hairs to some yeah, extent. Yeah. Like, I think you lump the middle, like, six or seven together, and I think we could all have our list in opposite orders, and I'd buy yeah. it. Like, they're all, it's, like, kind of interchangeable for me, personally. It's not about so how fast they kill it. It's also how how hard it is to deal with it, too. Like, Miram, for example, if you un- let un- Miram die, untap, you're basically just saying GG. But, like, yep. you can still deal with Miram pretty easily, I think. So then we say Eureka is the queen. She so like Eureka hard to deal with. Eureka yeah. is Eureka the number one. number one, right? Yeah. So I, I wouldn't. I can get behind that. In casual, just yeah. <laughs> one thing we can all agree on doesn't matter where the numbers move. <laughs> it is going to be casual CDH, whatever. Blow up the Eureka player. <laughs> the and then player, so not l- the, like, now the now let's 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 omit o- uh, Eureka from this because she's obviously going to be the best by by a landslide because of ninjutsu. Who is right after Eureka? For me, it's Niv Mizzet. Yeah, we got Niv Mizzet Urza. I mean, I would or, probably or have the, Urza the personally, tier. but yeah. I they're I think they're both similar. They're both commanders but you that had can to choose one. I would choose Urza. Oh, we'll never agree I choose this. Urza. I mean, we're I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer <laughs> necessarily, necessarily, but I would I, go. I with think Urza. it's close enough that we're, we're not gonna come to an agreement. Okay, on that. okay, okay. If Niv Mizzet doesn't I, have I, access to Jeweled Lotus or Dockside, I don't think he's that scary. Yeah, that's fair. I think I you know what, with that in mind, I, I would say probably Urza as well. I would say Urza. So I guess we do agree. Urza is the nut runner up. Mostly, yeah. And then Niv would be number three, I think. Yeah. So you're telling me cards made for Commander recently are very strong <laughs> versus uh, kind of the Boomer Commander cards. Also still very strong. Yep. Like even the bottom of this list will still kill you, but oh, yeah, not yeah. as high priority as the top of this list. 
It's just they give you a little more time. It's, yeah. it's really interesting because I you can see the complaints of people about commander getting too fast, which has been kind of a conversation kind of laid out in these commanders where like the most arch enemy commanders from a decade ago were basically saying they're really good, but they give you a couple of turns to like find a way to answer them when the most busted commanders from the last few years are we're talking about like if you can't kill them before combat or the turn it hits the battlefield, they got to die. So I think it's really interesting to just see how that commander design maybe plays into people's I don't, I don't experiences think, with the format. I don't think Urzo was specifically commander that's, <laughs> designed. Mm, that might, I mean, that Urzo was like, that's I can just, let you tutor your deck and you may not come up with the legitimate answer, right? Yeah, like you may not yeah. even have anything to deal with this, right? Like so. I will also say to be fair though, I would much rather die immediately than have to slowly die to a spoon with Brago. Just hitting me. <laughs> you on the really I mean, yes, yes. The, the personal just, grudge that you have against Brago, you know, and Seth, <laughs> I get it. All right, I understand. <laughs> All right. So let us know in the comments what your must kill commanders are. Uh, we just came up with, I'm sure we can come up with a much longer list if we just kept going forever. Yeah, uh, yeah. But these are just some varied ones uh, we had. Uh, come to mind. Let us know what you think number one is. If you agree with our tiers, maybe there's something higher than Yuriko tier. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, and then we'll see you all here back next week. So, see you everyone. <laughs>